In the last video, we showed how Maven can build against dependencies simply by specifying their Maven coordinates. We're going to take a closer look now. Our POMS dependencies section refers to two different dependency jars, log4j and junit. But right now, only the test code is using junit, and only the main code is using log4j. What happens if we have each one use the other's dependencies? We'll just copy an import from the main code to the test, and then we'll build again. That worked fine. Let's try the reverse, adding a junit import to the main code. And that doesn't work. Let's see why. Maven is suggesting that we use the dash x switch here. Let's do that. When we run with this switch, Maven shows us a lot of interesting detail. It's something like enabling the dash debug switch in Ant. What we're interested in is what is added to the class paths. There are actually three different class paths of interest. The one used to compile the program, the one used to compile the test, and the one used to run the test. We're going to focus on the compile and test compile class paths. Here are the elements of the compile class path. We see the classes directory in which we are compiling. We need that because a previous phase could have generated code against which we would need to build. We also see the log4j jar, but not the junit jar even though it's included in the pom. That explains why the compile failed. To understand what's going on, let's back out that change and run the build with diagnostics again. Now let's look at the test compile path. In addition to the main and test class directories, we see both the log4j and junit jars. Looking at the dependencies section of the pom, we see one important difference. The junit dependency has a scope element with the value test, while the log4j dependency has no scope element. It has a scope, as do all dependencies, which use the compile scope if none is otherwise specified. Compile scope means that the dependency will be used in all compilation and test steps and is available for transitive dependencies as well. We're going to discuss transitive dependencies in the next video. The test scope says that the jar should only be available in the test steps and not be available in transitive dependencies. This means that tests will not in any way affect users of a library as expected. There are additional scopes, most of which are not going to be shown in this introductory course. The Maven website has more information on those. We've now discussed the impact of scope on dependencies, discussing the two most common, compile and test. In the next video, we'll see how Maven uses transitive dependencies to further simplify building projects.